kind of had some difficulty getting a video out the last couple of weeks. So I figured I would do a live stream with the hopes that I can get a few people on asking some questions. I also picked up a bunch of questions that I have on my phone right here from a bunch of the old French cleat videos I've done and I uh, hope that uh, I can answer some of those. So I'm going to wait just a couple minutes here uh, just to see if I can get a few people more. Hi, Sue. Hi, KC. And uh, then we'll get started. So uh, if you are on, put a comment. I want to see roughly how many people are out there. And uh, I'm still new to the live stream. It's the only second one I've ever done. So I'm, uh, well, I'm a little rough around the edges. Hi, Russell. As you said on the distance between your cleats, I actually will be answering that question, Russell, in just a few minutes. So glad you brought that up. Hi, June. Good to see a number of y'all. Notice I uh, recognize a few of y'all, just your names. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> Russell, yes. Hi, Philip. Or Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I put on the states uh, or for the cities for that matter, but at least the states where you're from. Uh, that way I can get a good idea where you are around the world. And uh, hi, Gary. And Brent, I see y'all in Green Bay, yeah. All right, you're welcome, uh, Richard. Hi, Richard, good morning from Tennessee, yeah. Okay, now that we got a few people here, I think I'm going to get started on this. And, of course, uh, like I said just a moment ago, for those who didn't hear, I've had some trouble getting out the video the last couple of weeks, just some difficulties getting everything done and editing, combined with a bunch of tasks I've had around the house I've needed to complete and automobile uh, maintenance and things that need to get done. So we are going to um, answer a few. I've picked up a number of questions from the French cleat videos I've done in the past, and I figured these will be a number of good questions to answer here live for y'all. And I will uh, get to some more questions in the comments here. Hey, June, Jerry, and uh, I will get to those Orlando from Casey. Cool. I didn't know you're in Orlando. Uh, nice to know. I've got some family near there. But I will answer those questions in the comments in just a few. So if you by chance have any other questions besides the ones I'm going to be asking, I will ask for those in a little bit and then just flood the comments for those so I know exactly where uh, or what those are. So looking back, I have a question from Felix from Nebraska. He asks, is there such a thing as a best angle for a French cleat system? Well, it's most commonly believed to go with a 45 degree angle because it's half of 90, which should provide enough tension going, well, let me just grab my French cleat right here to show you. With the 45, it'll put some downward pressure and it'll have a little bit outward pressure, but hopefully if you have 45, not only on the piece that's on the wall, but on the back of your cleat here, then it'll provide pressure against the wall and kind of fit in a real tight, snug area between your cleat and your actual holder. So that's why it's recommended to do 45. I've heard people doing 30 and uh, that can work as long as it's sloping back towards the wall here. And that way it will allow you to put that pressure against the wall. I prefer 45, that's what I've always been told and what a lot of people have tested and seems to work very well. So that's why I go with the 45. Now, if by chance you are just cutting a, just a one strip going up, maybe it's going behind a cabinet or something that doesn't really matter about any other pieces of wood. It doesn't really matter too much about it being exactly 45 or exactly 30. Somewhere in there should be able to work. You can just take your piece, cut it, and then cut that angle in it and have one up on the wall and one on the back of maybe your cabinet or whatever that might be. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Question number two. Uh, not Chris asks, what thickness should the cleat be? Now, of course, I go with three quarter, as you can see right here. This is a one by or three quarters of an inch. And that is the most common uh, cleat size that is recommended because of you have its strength here and it's just a lot of wood. Now, of course, I'm using a soft wood. This is just pine. Uh, that right there works great for all the tools I have. As you can see behind me, all those back there here. These are all the same type of wood. It's a little bit thicker here. I'll explain that more here in a little bit. But um, I used three quarter inch. I've been told that you can do half inch. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend that for anything heavy. Um, for example, I got some heavy clamps as you see here. Those those holders are holding a good bit of weight, and 
half inch. I'd probably be a little bit nervous just because of the amount of surface here that is holding the actual tool holder up on the wall. Um, now, of course, you can play with that and find out the exact distance you want. You might be able to get away with half for a lot of light items, but I would stick with three quarters. All right. Next question is, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce this. I think it's like AS90V <laughs> Ask: is it possible to use plywood cleats straight on a concrete wall? Uh, I would say that depends. Now, if you're doing cinder block, or which is the, the holler, holler, wow, I can't speak, hollow blocks, that some buildings used to be made by. It's more common now to have a poured wall, especially in homes and things. But if you look at a lot of old school houses and they're up with concrete, a lot of times they're blocks. You'll see all the lines going through the walls where the mortar is and everything. Those are hollow in most cases. In those cases, I wouldn't necessarily put those straight on your actual wall there. Just because, uh, well, the wall, the th thickness of those concrete blocks, they're not very thick. And there's a good chance if you have a lot of weight, one, well, you could break them and, and uh, it just doesn't get the real good bite you would maybe from a solid poured wall. Now, if you have a solid poured wall and you could anchor those cleats really well with some deep anchors, then you could probably get away with it. Now, and something else I would strongly suggest, if you are going to put your cleats directly on a concrete wall, you need some waterproofing. Just remember, concrete is, it allows water to flow uh, relatively easily through its pores. And so if you have, especially if it's up against maybe uh, a dirt wall, you're holding up dirt with your concrete and uh, you have a poured wall or even a block wall, that water is going to slowly seep through. So you need to put up some kind of a water barrier, maybe some thick paint or maybe even um I don't know, maybe a form of plastic or something that's going to keep the water away from that wood. Because even with solid wood, it could swell a little bit and get weak or just weaken where the, the screws and fasteners might be going through it. Uh, with plywood, of course, depending on the type of plywood, it could delaminate if it gets wet for a long period of time. So I'd be concerned about that. I personally do not like to put my cleats up on a solid concrete wall. I would prefer to have either some kind of, like you see back here, this is um, not concrete behind it, but if it was, I would put up some kind of a, uh, a frame setup and be able to put either drywall, which is kind of weak, or in my case here, some particle board or some other plywood or something along those that frame to give it strength. And that gives you a lot more maneuverability and uh, uh, ability to just to change up your whole workshop. For example, so you want part of it to be French cleats and part of it be just standard shelves or part of it to be something else, or if you do want to put some nails in it, it's going to be a lot more accessible to hanging things on it if you have a frame set up with plywood or part of the board or something along those lines that will allow you to do that. So that's my personal preference. I've seen a number of people who've actually put French cleats up on solid concrete walls and it works for them. Um, but for me, I wouldn't recommend that, at least not for me. Now, it's totally up to you. It's your garage. It's your home. It's your workshop. Do whatever you want. All right. The uh, next question is from, uh, let's see if I can pronounce this, uh, Jete Paleo. Pal I am sorry I butchered that name. <laughs> All right. It says, how heavy French cleat can lift? Ah, I'm guessing probably uh, due to the name, it's probably English is not first language. But okay, how heavy can a French cleat lift? I've personally not actually tested how much uh, French cleat can hold. Uh, there's been a number of forums that have talked about this, and I've went back and did a little research on those, and I couldn't find any exact testing. And the reason why is, in my case, I'm just using pine. Some people are going to use hardwood. Some can, people are going to be using plywoods to make your French cleats. And in all those cases, it's going to vary greatly between the amount of weight it can hold up for one version versus another. Now, again, if you see back here, again, this is all just pine French cleats. And right now I got, I got a few up here that are holding quite a bit of weight and it's just softwoods. And if I had the same size in a hardwood, it would probably be even stronger. And I could put even more weight up. I've not had any flex from this and 
I'll show you why here in a little bit. But this right here is real strong, and pine is really good in my case. Uh, it might be easier for you to get a hardwood or a plywood in yours, and you can use whatever you prefer. Um, it's really dependent upon like the thickness, the or I should say the height you have your French cleats here. This is where you get a lot of your strength is the height of them. Now, for example, this one's pretty thin. And this thin, I wouldn't necessarily, since this is pine, I wouldn't recommend this to be actually up on your wall here. If you notice, like here, this is about half the thickness of the actual cleats I have on the wall. Because that's where you get a lot of your strength in the holding down in between where your fasteners are, is the thickness of your wood. Now, you get most of your strength is actually from the fasteners. And a lot of people, if they're using hardwoods or sometimes even plywood, they'll only have one screw going into each stud. I actually prefer two. And that's just my preference. I, I feel that, you know, one screw is pretty strong. Two screws is going to double that strength. So I like doing that along each of my studs. And so whenever you're installing your French cleats, no matter if it's pine or hardwood or any type of plywood make sure you hit those studs going in there because you want as much strength as possible let's see i believe i had one other note about that let me double check and uh oh yeah uh it's again not only the number of fasteners but the type of fasteners i would strongly not recommend any kind of drywall screws to hang up french cleats you want good quality screws at least a number nine, maybe even a number 10 to hold those in specifically if you're going to be putting a lot of weight on them. So just keep that in mind. Not only does it matter the type of material you're using, but the number of fasteners, the type of fasteners. So to actually test that out would be a huge range. All I can tell you is that using softwoods, two screws per stud, I've never had any of these cleats even remotely start to move as long as you can get them in appropriately, and it's a softwood. So they are very strong. French cleats are very strong. I would not risk your life on them, just like I would do that on a lot of things. But for most of your tools that you're going to be putting up in your shop, if you cut them appropriately, make sure you hit those studs appropriately, and make sure you have the, uh, the appropriate angles and thicknesses, then it should all be able to hold a bunch of weight for you. All right. Let's see. Next question. Cheryl... Albury, I believe Taylor, I believe that's how you say it. All right. She asks for the cleats are pallets strong enough to use? If not, what would you suggest? Well, in some cases, pallets are able to hold, uh, uh, hold up your projects. Um, for example, let me turn the computer here and I'm going to show you this over here, over here where I have my logo. You'll notice down here, this right here is all pallet wood. This whole wall is pallet wood. And all these cleats that are here are pallet wood. I was, when I first started off, I started using some pallets. But there is something that you'll notice when you start using pallets like that. Let me move this computer back, please. All right. One thing about pallet wood is that it varies in thickness per board on the same pallet. You can have several different boards on one pallet, and none of them are, none of them, none of them are identical by any means. For example, here's the three quarter inch piece. And it's a little, probably a little bit hard to tell there in the video, but it's probably about an eighth of an inch thinner than this three quarter inch board here. And so that's probably what, about five eighths, give or take. And uh, so that's one thickness. So if you're doing anything light duty with pallet wood, you can use French cleats. Um, Again, I probably wouldn't recommend them for your whole wall just because of varying in sizes. And it probably, at least in my case, would drive me nuts if I try and move the cleat over. And now it won't fit on this one, but it fits on this one. Um, part, again, the strength of your cleat is, is once it is up on the wall here, that is that wedging factor that wedges it between the cleat and your wall that gives it a lot of sturdiness so it doesn't move. And by using pallet wood, in most cases, you probably won't, excuse me, Mobby probably won't be able to do that. All right. Now let's move this on to the next question. Uh, Scott Bennett asked, how far apart did you space your French cleats on the wall? There we go. Uh, in my case here, I spaced mine roughly about five inches. That was personal choice on mine. It just, I thought it looked good. It kind of gave me a nice little, 
uh, room between the cleats I have up there, but that was just my personal preference. Now, what really matters is that when you're hanging your holders, your tool holders up on your French cleats, only thing that really matters is can you get those in there easily? And once you can get those in there easily, it really doesn't matter the distance between your actual cleats that are up on the wall here. So I get that question a lot. What's the dis difference between it? It really doesn't matter as long as you can get your holders up on there and you can attach them nice and strong and they'll sit in there and won't move. So just keep that in mind. You can do that at any distance. I've seen them anywhere like the five inches, what I have. I've seen them where they're about two inches apart. You can just barely get your cleat holder in there. I've seen them when they're about 10 inches apart and you had tons of room to just throw your cleats up on the wall. So it really, it's up to you. So please just make them look good in your shop and uh, everybody will admire them once you get them done. All right, let's see what the next question is. Uh, Mr. M says, since you use uh, one and a quarters for the, I'm sorry, one by fours for the cleats, I mean, you have to use one by four cleats in the backs of your French feet holders and shelves, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm using one by fours up here. And all I did, of course, this is a, this is a shorter one, but let's cut a 45 degree angle and the, the top ends up here and put those up on the wall. Uh, and since one by fours are roughly three quarter inch thick in almost all cases, um, it doesn't you don't have to have a one by four per se on the back of your cleat holder to make it latch in there. As long as it's three quarter and what you have up and along is this three quarter. You can use plywood, hardwood, scrap wood for that matter. I've done that where I've had little pieces of scrap wood, a little 45 degree angle and put it on the back of my tool holders. And that works just fine as well. It does not have to be the same exact wood as long as it's the same size. That's the key factor. And that, that's what you use. Also, for example, like I do here, all I did, it's a one by four, but all I did was cut the top of it off so I can have that thickness. And in this case here, you can see that this is much thinner. It's roughly about half. I probably actually took a, a one by four and just cut it in half. Because it's so much smaller and this is a softwood, this right here would be recommended probably go on the back of your actual tool holders, not really to go up on your wall because you could glue this in place in the back of your holders and have a bunch of strength or you can just put a, several screws in there and do the same. And one tool holder, with the exception of some of the major tools, uh, will be pretty light versus what everything will be hanging on your wall there. So I hope that answers that question. Let's see here. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find where I did. There it is. Uh, this one was a little bit off topic, but I keep getting this question over and over again on my French clip, particularly the, I believe it was the first video that I did out, uh, I put up. It says, how did you connect the two blue tape rolls. Give me about two seconds and I'll grab it off the wall here. All right. Whew, that's dusty. <laughs> you can see how little I move that around. All right. This right here, I get a bunch of questions on this. And uh, this right here was a, um, a fun project I did several years ago. And it is, if you can look at it, it's actually kind of hard to tell where and how I did that. I actually did a video on this. I'll put a link to that in uh, the description once this goes up and uh, make sure that's on there in case you ever want to see that. I mean, I admit it's not, it's it's a boring process, but I did make a video of it in case you are interested. But it's literally, I linked two of these paint and roll tapes together. And so that'll help answer that question uh, if anybody <laughs> was wondering about that. All right. Now we've been on here for Right at 20 minutes. Okay. Now I'm going to look over in the comments or the chat section. And uh, if by chance you have any other questions about French cleats, please put those there and we'll try to get to those. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, let's see. We got what's a perfect spacing between the hankers. Uh, like I answered earlier, um, it, there's no perfect distance between the hangers. It's completely up to you. And uh, that just whatever makes your shop look good and whatever you can put up to get the most efficiency out of your shop and uh, whatever can make you feel like you can sleep at night, I guess. <laughs> so it's not going to bug you. Uh, let's see. Jack, Jack, I'm sorry if I butcher any names. I admit I am not good at pronouncing names here. Uh, this one oh, looks like Holly. Okay. 
what's your next project? Okay, um, I'm actually building a desk for my son. Uh, well, it's actually complete now. I've had some issues trying to get the editing done. And so that will hof hopefully will be out next Thursday. And uh, it's a it's kind of a minimalistic desk, but also kind of a gaming desk per se. My son designed it, kind of sat down and designed it up. And so uh, it would be in his room, fit the size that he wanted and what he would like for what he needed. Okay. Let's see. Oh, they're asking, how would you design a holder for screws? Different different sixes of boxes. Uh, a holder for screws. Okay. Well, I did have a, a uh, design right over here. As you can see right here, I, I put this together not too long ago. Actually, made well. Actually, it's probably it was probably one of my first fringe cleat videos. Um, I can't remember exactly. Let's just pull it off the wall and show you. All right. Now, as you can see here, it I have slots for all the different screws in here, and some extra area in the middle just to, to hold some of it. And uh, it is quite dusty because it's unfortunately stored right behind my miter saw and it gets a ton of dust blown and sawdust all over it. But it's a very simple system. I just have little slots in here, which, oh yeah, I glued them in place. And it holds, and I measured this out so that each of these boxes, which is a very common size for screws, will fit in there nicely. And that's a very simple system you can do. Um, yes, it's limited by the number of holders and slots that you put in there. So, uh, yeah, uh, I would probably I'd probably build this a little bit bigger, depending on how many varieties of screws and nails you're going to need. But uh, overall, this has worked well for me. I have 10 main slots, and in the, in the middle, I have some other random things, as you can see there. But, yeah, all right. Let's see, what's the... Heaviest thing you would safely hang on a three-quarter inch thick French cleats. Uh, let's see. What do I have here? I have, as you can see right over here, this is my holder for a lot of my drills and batteries and everything else that I can basically stick on it. Some of my chargers are up there as well. Uh, that is actually quite heavy. Uh, so is, if you look back here, that has all my clamps on it. That is quite heavy as well. Uh, this one over here, I actually have attached to two French clicks. I'm not going to put an actual number on what's the maximum amount of weight because I just, I don't feel that is appropriate because I have not tested that and I'm not going to be, uh, I don't want to be responsible for anything breaking anybody get hurt. I hope you understand that. But that holder there is quite heavy. I'd probably say maybe... 40 pounds or more, and it has not budged. I actually went back and attached a second cleat under it because I am kind of rough with it, and it, it, it can get bounced around a little bit, getting drills and stuff shoved into it on a regular basis. Versus back here, this right here, with all the clamps on it, I wouldn't be surprised if that's 30 or 40 pounds, and it's only on one cleat itself. Uh, and it's pretty strong. It's actually made out of two buys, if you can see right here. Um, the actual hold. Uh, all of the clamps. You can see I have another one up here. And those are quite heavy though as well. I never had any issues with them acting like they were going to fall off. But I was also very, very uh, strict on myself about making sure that this was an exact 45 degree angle so I'd get the most rigidity and the, the grip in between the cleat and the wall itself. So it would wedge itself in there and not move around. So um, yeah, they can hold quite a bit of weight. Um, I probably... Me personally, wouldn't go much more than that, especially since I'm just using softwoods. Uh, I would limit myself. But I've been told, and I'll, I'll say this, I've been told and seen videos where somebody is saying these things could hold over 100 pounds. I've seen pictures and video where somebody would climb up on a shelf they had up on a French cleat wall. And we're talking, you know, between 150 and 200 pounds, they climb up on it and it held them. I personally don't feel all that comfortable about climbing up on there. Not just because I'm scared the French cleats to give out, but just because of the design. If you put too much weight, that's one of the limitations you will have to be careful about French cleats. You don't want, let's, let's show you with this. 
when you have the cleat up here and you have whatever you have built off of it, you don't want too much weight sticking off of it because that just gives it a, a um, I guess, a pivoting factor. And you want to make sure you have some kind of a uh, support underneath it. I've seen it where people have built out tables coming way out, but they had a couple different supports that went underneath. If you didn't have that, that would be real easy to fall off. Okay. So I'm talking about mainly the shear factor of strength of the cleats. As long as you have everything set up and it's supported very well below it, these are very, very strong. I wouldn't be too concerned about the weight you put on it unless you're getting up, you know, over 50 pounds. And then that's up to you. I'm not going to put a limitation on that. All right. Let's see. Any other questions? Uh, Jim H. asks, any more PVC projects coming up? Unfortunately, I've kind of got out of the PVC trend. I did that, oh, I can't remember how long ago. That was probably three years ago, four years ago that I put out the, the last PVC video, something along those lines. Um, I'll be honest, I, I got tired of making stuff out of PVC. I hate to say that, but I did. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that I can get on a trend for a while of making certain things. And then at some point, I'm just tired. I don't want to make it anymore. And that's kind of what happened with the PVC. Um, it's it's a PVC is a remarkable material. You can do a ton of stuff with it. And if you go look back to my playlist and PVC things I've made, there's so much you can do with it. Um, but I wanted something, for example, like PVC for you know the length of this. You did this. It would it would flex a little bit, especially when you get out to longer lengths. But with wood, you got a lot more rigidity and strength. And I just I wanted to start making stuff that had a little more strength rigidity to it. And that's why I kind of stepped away from the PVC. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Russell Reigns, have you had to use two cleats to hold heavy objects or has one clear across the top been okay? In most cases, I've only used one. For example, like I said, over here, when I did that holder there, that's the only one I've ever actually used two on that I, I can remember. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's the only one I can think of that I've actually only used two on. And again, that's because I putting the, the uh, drills and everything in there and out, it gets a ton of use and it gets jostled around a lot. And I wanted to make sure by having the two cleats on there, there was very little chance of it ever getting pulled out if something got hung up as I was trying to yank it out. And so that was mainly the concern for that. If it wasn't for that, I probably would be fine with just the one cleat. Uh, again, they hold a ton of weight as long as they are done correctly and all of the everything else I've said about them are you know in position and it, it works well and they're secured well into the studs. Cleats, French cleats are actually very, very strong. All right. Uh, how hard is it to get plywood these days over there in the U.S.? Oh, you're from Germany. Hey, um, uh, plywood has actually gotten pretty. It's gotten back where you can get it pretty easy now. The prices on. Some of it has come down. Um, the, the the cheaper pine stuff that there for a while was more expensive than some of the hardwoods. Uh, I'm talking mainly like in like Home Depot or Lowe's has come back down in price. It's still not fully back to what it was uh, pre COVID times, but you know, it's, it is what it is. And um, you work with what you got. Uh, for example, the desk I bought, or uh, I'm sorry, I built, for my son here, I actually used a uh, I used uh, birch plywood, not not a Baltic birch, just basic birch, and that one I believe was I believe it was a little over seventy for the four by eight sheet, and I used probably a little over half of the sheet in it. So, um, yeah, let me get something to drink. I'm sorry. All right. So uh, has it come back down? Yeah, it's, it's coming back down. And just it, give it time. I'm sure some of it will come back down. The two by fours, for example, in my area, they got up, I believe it was over $10 per uh, eight foot length. And it's come down to where it's just under four now. Thank goodness. Uh, so I have a feeling plywood will be coming back down. Just just give it time. Okay. Let's see. How's it going, every uh, Russell? How wide are your cleats on the wall versus the the anchor cleat on the box you are hanging? How wide? Uh, the ones on the wall. Well, here, if you can see here, I have it on um, this wall. Runs from one side, literally, past the door. If I can get it. 
to the other side of the wall there. Um, I got basically the whole wall is nothing but French cleats. Uh, up to about, it's probably from about my waist to just overhead. And you see, when anchors, I literally have every single stud that's in the wall, I have anchored the cleats to. Uh, I believe it is on 16 inch centers. And that's the way this uh, workshop was put together. Um, yeah. And so, and every stud, I literally have two screws in every stud. Uh, holding up the cleats. Now there are a couple places where like the uh, wood comes together and let's see. Uh, there are a couple places like right above here. Can't see it very well, but actually have two pieces, two wood uh, pieces where they meet two cleats and two of them I know are in a wall and two of them are not, but literally just a little bit over from it. I have those uh, two more right there. I believe this is the one that it's not in the stud and then right over here you'll see the screws right there that will actually hold it into the stud and sometimes you have to do that in my case i did but in the case like this if you see because this holder is very heavy i made sure that i have part of it on this cleat here which has the stud and part part of it on the other so i'm not concerned about the the weight or the anchoring in that case there but in every case, if you need to find those studs, that's where you want your full strength. You get the end of studs and the shear factor. It, it limits that shear factor, makes it a lot stronger. Now, on the back of your cleats, uh, the holders, that is, um, I like to try and do about full length. It really depends on the type of holder that you're going to do. If, for example, like on the back of these uh, this clamp rack here. I actually have the full width of the clamp rack and that way I don't have to be concerned of it being weak on it. And uh, I can't remember. I think I have glue and screws on that. And most of them, I put glue and screws on the back of the holder to hold the cleat that's on the back of it so that it is fully or has full strength to it. Um, if you're doing something light, there are a few cases here where I actually have them just on the corners because the tool holder is really light. It doesn't matter as much on that case. But uh, yeah, if it's going to be heavy, I'd prefer to have the cleat going fully across your tool holder as well. So I hope that answers your question. If not, please put it again in the comments and uh, I will answer that. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Russell again. Uh, are your cleats right against drywall? Um, This right here is actually, it's, uh, I think it's called part not particle board. Uh, I'm honestly blanking on it, but no, I do not have drywall up on my walls. It's a, it's a, uh, oh, I cannot think of the name of it right now, but it's, it's like a particle board or, or, or uh, where it has a bunch of the strands that are all glued together. For some reason, it's uh, not in my head right now. It will not come out. But in any case, drywall, uh, if you're building up a shop and you're, you're putting up the walls yourself, and you, I strongly either suggest some kind of a plywood or some kind of a particle board, something that has some strength, because just remember, uh, drywall is kind of weak. Uh, in a lot of cases, um, you can just take a tool and just barely poke it and you can put a hole through your drywall. And so uh, that's why I wouldn't recommend it for a workshop. If by chance you already have it up in your shop, well, utilize what you have. Don't go about changing everything. Um, I'd probably in those cases, maybe put your cleats a little bit closer together. And that way it's less likely for you to put a hole through the wall. And just keep in mind, if by chance you do put a hole through the wall, you can always change it out later with plywood. But in my case, if you're, like I said, if you're building up a shop, I don't recommend using drywall, at least not to put on the walls where you're going to be putting your French cleats, just because of a good chance of putting holes through them. OSB. Yay. Thank you, Ray. Yes, that is. It's OSB. <laughs> oh, man, that was blanking. I was completely blanking right there. But yeah, that's what I have up on the wall here. It was here when, uh, when we moved in this part of the shop, the wall was already done. And because OSB, it's it's pretty strong in itself, a lot stronger than drywall. That's I just left it up. That's what I went with, and it has not been a problem for me. I I've given it a couple coats of paint to make it look a lot better, and it kind of being white versus the uh, color, which is this is considered a traditional cherry for my cleats. It kind of helps everything just pop a little bit better. That's why I went with it. Yes. All right. Let's see. I've seen. Let's see. Oh, back to that question uh, against draw. I've seen people hang plywood on drywall and acre walk yeah it, it, it is plywood overkill 
I guess in some instances it can be. Um, I, for a workshop, just remember, you're going to be moving around tools. You're going to be moving around a bunch of wood. You're going to be moving around, uh, I don't know, different things. Your, your big tools. And there's a good chance if I wasn't paying attention, I went like this, and it was drywall, I'd have holes in my wall right there. And with wood, you're, you're not going to be paying attention sometimes. I'm sorry. There goes my phone. Ah, let me uh, cancel that real quick. All right. Sorry about that, y'all. This is live. Okay. Now, uh, I wouldn't recommend it with drywall just because I've done it numerous times where I've bumped my ceiling, bumped my walls, hit tools, and all I'm doing is trying to move around a piece of wood. Um, yeah, I, I've had moments where I've not been paying attention and I hit a tool. And have you ever had a where you've had like a screwdriver sitting on a ledge, you're not paying attention, you bend over and hit it and it just goes flying? Yeah, I've done that. Um, I've been, I've gotten frustrated and threw tools down. And if it, by chance I had uh, drywall, I'd probably have holes in the wall where tools or wood or anything else has hit it by accident. And so that's why I don't recommend it. But if you already have it, like I said, if you already have it up in your walls in your workshop, don't take it down. At least not initially. Leave it up and just do your, your cleats on there and make sure you have those cleats fully into the stud of those or in the anchored into those studs because that's where you get a lot of your strength. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm going to go back through some of these other questions that were asked and see if I can... Uh, find a good question oh good i want to see from green bay from tennessee from michigan this is awesome california well great to have all y'all i'm from alabama more from virginia cool ohio that's cool nova scotia canada cool i always love seeing the ones that are um in other countries so cool if you, by chance you uh, have not put where you're from put just put a comment where you're from over in the chat section i love to see the variety of people around the world that are actually on here. I don't do this very often. So um, let's see, we're at 38 minutes. Wow, we've been at 38 minutes. Okay. All right, let's go back over to question. Do you have any ideas to get the, the wire management somehow easy? Ah, okay. Uh, wiring your walls and everything like that. Um, if you've never done it, I'd be careful doing it yourself. In fact, I'd probably recommend, I would recommend you probably getting a, uh, a contractor out or at least somebody who electrician out who knows what they're doing when they're wiring up walls, depending on codes in your area and how things are done. Uh, it can be very tricky and very dangerous in itself. Um, I, I grew up with my father. He had wired a number of things in his house. And so I felt comfortable actually wiring. I, I asked him as well when I had to do some extra wiring in this shop. Let's see. It is right over here. As you can see right there, this thing right here is actually a 220. And I had to put that in um, when I was putting in my table saw. So I, my last live video, which is done, I believe it was done back in January. I actually had to run a bunch of wire over through the ceiling. I had to take down some of my French cleats and go behind it because that is what was by code to be safe. And also, for example, like I was showing earlier, where you're banging stuff around in your shop, be very careful with anything electrical because there's always that chance that you might actually put a tool into it or you might, you know, just hit it or, or cause a fire for that matter. So it's be very careful when you're doing electrical um, and management around French cleats. I would, if possible, especially if you have not actually put up walls in where you're about to do your workshop. I'd recommend put, make sure you have all your wiring thought out ahead and wire it behind the, the, whether it's drywall or particle board or OSB or whatever you plywood, whatever you're putting up on your walls, plan that out ahead. You want to make sure that all that wiring is safely stored behind where you're going to be working. So you don't hit it and whack it and knock it off and accidentally cut it. And well, one, electrocute yourself. Two, set fire to your shop. So just be very careful. I, I can't recommend enough to be careful on that. All right. Let's see. Yeah, like in case you need power. For example, like I, I did that one. It's a 220. 
and uh, over a little bit further, I put in an additional uh, 20 amp for 110. And uh, again, just be very careful. And uh, we, we don't want anybody to get hurt, especially with electrical. It is not forgiving, uh, to, especially if the higher the amp and higher the voltage you go. See, how thick is your OSB? Oh, um, I believe this one, I took it down. I believe it was about, I think it was about five eighths, maybe slightly smaller. Um, it, it was, it was, I would recommend for, if you're going to be using plywood or, uh, OSB or, um, particle board, something along those lines, the, to go, I would definitely not go below quarter inch. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not go below half inch, not quarter inch. That's way too thin. <laughs> uh, not go below half inch, uh, because you, you want that rigidity. You want that strength in the wall. Um, and like I said, I believe these are uh, five eighths inch thick. I, if you can, if you can afford it, I'd probably go three quarter inch um, because you like that strength is there. You don't have to worry about anything giving and flexing, specifically with French cleats. And uh, yes, you, you got your strength from your cleats, but a lot of times that wood, if it flexes a little bit, you know, you don't want that cleat to flex with it as well. You want that strength to be in there and be nice and strong. So I'd say minimum half inch. But uh, I'd probably recommend three quarters inch. Let's see uh, what minimum thickness for plywood, particle board, etc. In Colorado, hey, hey, out of Colorado, nice and Germany. All right, okay, y'all. We've been on here for about forty-two minutes, give or take. Uh, if you have any other questions about French cleats or anything along those lines, or anything in my shop for that matter. Uh, I'm probably going to be on here maybe 15, 20 more minutes. I got a few other projects and things around this house that I got to get done today. Um, but uh, if you have any more questions, please put those up. Uh, yeah, U.S. Power. Okay, yeah, U.S. Power is uh, 120 or 240. I, I I say 110. I mean 120. I'm sorry about that. And, and uh, depending on the, the way people talk or spe uh, specify – their electricity. A lot of times they'll say 110, 110, 220, or I'm sorry, 110, 120, kind of interchangeable, two, uh, 220, 240. People say it interchangeably around here. And uh, so, yeah, it it might be actually officially 120 and 240, but I'm sorry if I didn't say that correctly. Okay. Oh, all right. Now, one other thing I'm trying to think of here is that, oh, there's the example, as I was talking about earlier, about the full width of your cleat. And I just wanted to give you an example there. This right here is super light little holder. In fact, I probably could have got away with just some, I don't know, one-inch little sections on the end there. But uh, I'd already made it up and just put one. And so I always like, for example, to keep a bunch of extra French cleat stuff around. I got this one. I got this one. I think I even have another one over there for two holders. And uh, I keep having my, uh, my my wife, my son, and other friends like, well, I think you've run out of room for your French cleats. And in my shop, I probably have. I know. Actually, on the other side of this wall, I'm not sure if you've seen it, I actually did a huge American flag. And the reason why I went with that is, well, one, I'm in the U.S., but the other is because all the stripes that are in the U.S. flag allowed me to put up a bunch more cleats. But it still looks really cool because it's a flag. So, uh yeah, French cleats are pretty awesome if you haven't determined. Yes, I really like them. And I hope if you've never tried them that you can actually get in and try them uh, as well. Give me some drink. All right. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Oh, Russell, another question. Thank you, Russell. Do you use between two or three inch wide wall cleats? I see. And how are the anchor cleats on the back of your boxes and tools? Do you use between two or three inch wall cleats? Okay. Uh, up here on my wall, because I'm using softwoods, those again are, uh, it was a one by four. So what's that? Three and a half inches. And then, so I cut the, the top edge off to make the 45 degrees. So it's say, say it's like three, three and a quarter inches, give or take is the cleats that are up here. Because again, they're soft woods. I've seen a number of people using hardwoods that were much smaller and could probably get away with the two inch. 
but uh, I just uh, the the soft woods are easier for me to grab and the the one by fours and uh, I just I like I like working with soft woods. That's me. Uh, each to their own, and if you have hardwoods in your area that are a lot are cheaper than your softwoods, go with them. Uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, again, to see, and he also asks, how wide are the anchor cleats in the back of your boxes and tools? Again, usually I try to go the full width, uh, especially if they're going to be heavy. Um, let's see, like this one. This right here, it's just holding some bow saw bow sanders that I made. It's real light. I mean, everything, even the holder there, it's real light all together. And so I just have a tiny, small little cleat on the back of it. And it's glued to the back. I think I may even have a couple of brad nails that were in place to, to hold it while the glue dried. I usually like putting glue on most of the, the backs of my tool holders to hold the cleats in place so that they're nice and strong. Uh, and I don't have to worry about them ever coming off. Uh, let's see. Do I have any? Uh... I can't think of any that I have at the moment that I have the separated pieces. I know I got at least a couple somewhere, but uh, let's see. For example, this yeah, this has got some weight on it because it is wrenches, as you can see there. And I did, again, did the full width of the cleat here. Now, I want to show you this. This looks like another cleat down here. It is actually not. This is just a support. So as this is going against the wall, this is an additional support so it doesn't try and pivot down because there is a lot of weight. This right here, you have the cleat holding in the cleat and then you have a little support that goes against the wall. That keeps the pivoting motion to an absolute minimum. And that way it kind of gives it more strength that it's gonna wanna go down versus swing out. And that is why this is here. Um, I would recommend this on any type of tool holders that are long so that you can have some kind of additional bracing against the wall so that it doesn't try and move around on you. I'm glad I actually pulled that down to show you that one. And I just made a mess. All right. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's see. What else we got? Uh, one regarding wood versus plywood. Plywood may be a little overkill, but won't warp, which is wood. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, wood versus plywood. Yeah. I, I mean do whatever you want when you're making your cleats it's whatever you prefer i know you can sometimes get cheaper if you're using plywood uh i know a gentleman um chris is from a glimpse inside uh if by chance you haven't ever checked out that channel he has a ton of french cleats around his workshop it's an awesome setup that he has there so i'd make sure to check out that channel if you have not already a glimpse inside and uh if by chance you go there just let them know that specific love sent you and uh, he knows we've, we've talked a few times at a bunch of different events. He's an awesome guy. Um, let's see. For your answers, I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, let's, for Russell's asking, do you cut down a four by eight plywood or just one by four boards? I personally, I like the idea of using the, the one by fours. Let me find it. Because the reason why is that if, I'm not sure if you've noticed that, here recently, the three quarter inch plywood, a lot of time is not three quarter inch. I had a friend of mine who actually got uh, some three quarter inch plywood and wanted to put up his French cleat wall. His French cleat wall. Actually, he got two different uh, uh, pieces of plywood, both of them three quarters. But then once he started putting everything together, he realized, no, one of them's smaller than the other. And unfortunately, they've been doing that a lot here. At, I forget, it's like, was it 1920 something? I can't remember the exact dimensions they're putting on it, but it's not exactly three quarter. And so I found that going by the one by fours, that these are three quarters in most of the cases, at least that I found in the areas where I'm at. And so that allows me to keep the consistency from the cleats I've already put up on the wall versus the cleats I'm putting on the back of my tool holders or new cleats that I'm putting up. Just going with the, the one by fours, that allows me just to keep that consistency. Now, if you're going to buy a bunch of plywood and go ahead and cut those down um, and can have everything extra, maybe you're going to have a bunch of extras like I do here, but it's all going to be the same plywood. You can, you can go with that, but that's just why I go with the one by fours. It's just a consistency of the thickness. And uh, at least it's a lot easier to get than, you know, the, the plywood that's in my area that varies a little bit about every time I go to the, to the store. All right. Uh, let's see. I think it's 
Jacoli, Jacoli, I'm sorry if I messed it. Oh, I think that was Holly, right, earlier? All right. Uh, anyway, is YouTube your full-time job or is it just a hobby? Uh, I, I I really wish it was my full-time job. I would love to be able just to make videos and stuff all the time. No, it's not my full-time job. It's my side gig. I've been doing it for a while. I don't, uh, I, I don't push um, all the different... Uh, what's where I'm looking at all, all the different ways to make money that a number of the other YouTubers do. They're, they're, they're selling plans or they're doing memberships. And I'm not saying I won't ever do that. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I'm only just doing the AdSense from the videos. And uh, that's where the, the income comes in. It pays for a lot of the things that allow me to keep making the videos. Cause I try and reinvest a good bit of the money that I get from YouTube back into whether it's the projects I'm making or buying new tools or uh, buying new equipment, um, lighting, which I upgraded uh, was it two years ago, a year ago, a year and a half ago, and make my shop a little bit better, make it easier to see uh, and, and I don't you know, be able to sit around and do little projects and things like that. So that's that's where it comes from. And one day I might try and do a little extra. I, the main things I have, I have the AdSense from YouTube and I do the... Um, the affiliate program from Amazon. I'll actually put that in the comments. I mean, in the description as well, in case uh, you're interested in helping support the channel. If you go to Amazon, which I'm sure a lot, if not most of the people in the U.S., if they're around the world do, uh, if you want to help out our channel, um, just there'll be a link I'll put in the description of this video once it has gone, uh, I guess not live, but once it has been posted and it will have the, the link to our Amazon I guess, influencer page and you click on that. And if you want to buy something, it doesn't cost you anything extra and any kind of, I get like a very, very, very small percentage. But, you know, if I had 500 people go in there and buy something, I might get, you know, a hundred dollars, $200 or something like that, depending on what they buy. And I can, again, reinvest that back into the videos in the shop. So that's, that's what I use to support the channel. Uh, it's just a side gig for us, uh, for what I do. Hopefully, Maybe one day I will. I've been talking to the wife about that. And uh, she says, eh, maybe, maybe one day. And so, yeah, that's what it is. All right. Let's see. Let's see. A lot of my, this is from Jim. A lot of my cleats have been made from scraps. I have laying around. Yeah, that scraps can work. Uh, again, make sure just that the consistency of the thickness is the same. Um I made a number of scraps, mainly the tool holder pieces that are holding the actual tools. A lot of those were scraps and leftovers that I actually made the tool holders from. And then just made sure I had a nice good cleat and put that on the back of it. And it, it does very well. Let's see if I have any right here. Yeah. This one right here, it was just some scrap leftover pieces. For example, this was, I believe, so a one by, actually, no, this was a, uh, I believe that was a piece of cedar that I had left over that made that piece and that one. And this was just some, I think some quarter inch uh, underlayment that I used to make that holder. And so it doesn't really matter what you make your actual holders from. Uh, again, as long as the consistency of your cleats can match what's up on the wall, it works. So by chance, you do have some good plywood that is three quarter inch. It doesn't matter if you have a hardwood strip, a plywood strip or a softwood strip up on your wall. That right there is going to work and hold well. All right. Let's see. The big box, let's see. The big box store over here, I'm always getting 18 millimeter by 95 millimeter by uh, 2,100 millimeter, which is perfect for French cleats. I just cut them down in the middle with 45 degree. It's roughly three quarters by uh, three and three quarters by 69. Okay. Yeah. Again, whatever works in your area, I if it's somewhere along the three quarter inch size, that's what I would prefer and would suggest just because of its strength. It doesn't have to be exactly. And I'm sure specifically out of the U S and you're, you're going to be uh, using metric primarily, definitely, definitely get something that's just thicker and you want to make sure it is strong for your French cleats and just keep that consistency on your walls and on the back of your tool holders. Oh, let's see. Jacali. I'm sorry if I, I mispronounce your name. I apologize ahead. I am not good with names, but I hope you can do it full time. You're a great teacher. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate. Maybe one of these days I can. 
Hey, Anthony. <laughs> Good to see you on here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, some of, let's see. Some are plywood, some are of OSB, some are, man. That's what, yeah, Jim. And again, you can use whatever you want to make your tool holders from as long as the cleat that is holding it up on the wall is roughly and pretty close to the exact cleat size that's on there. All right. Let's see. When I was a little, little girl, my daddy called me his little helper. Include your children where you can. So most of my fondest memories. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, if by chance you can include your kids in your workshop, please do. Uh, I tried to bring in my son over the, the past few years when I did different things. He liked doing it back more, I think, when it was the, the PVC because it was just a little bit easier. And he was younger. And uh, But here lately, he is doing sports. He has school. He, has, uh, he also does martial arts. Um, just uh, standard uh, other activities he goes to church and different things he is quite busy and the time that i'm usually in the workshop and the time that he's home well it usually does not cross over very much anymore and so uh, it's, it's a little bit hard to get him into videos and get him to work on the project so yeah so if you can i do miss that if you can get your kids out there get your kids in the shop show them what you can do because i'll look at it this way if you're not going to show them, then somebody else is probably going to take advantage of them in the future. Get them to know the basics, the drills, saws, so that one, they don't hurt themselves. Two, they know how to do basic different uh, fixes and maintenance around your shop and on your cars and whatever else you have. Get your kids involved. It's very important because if you don't show them, somebody will take advantage of them. All right, we've been on here for 57 minutes. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on here for just a couple more minutes. If you have any more last minute questions, please throw those in the chat. I will try to answer them relatively quickly. And otherwise, I'm gonna be getting off here in just a couple minutes. Uh, again, I got some other things I need to do. So, give you all just a minute. Ah, excuse me. Okay. Oh oh oh! I do want to say one last thing. I just say thank you for everybody that's on here. It means a lot that y'all have been able to get on here. Um, whether y'all are subscribers or not, which I'm guessing most of you probably are. I do recognize a number of your names and I do appreciate all the you that are here. And uh, thank you. I, I, I'm truly grateful for all of you that get on there and watch. Um, again, if uh, you didn't hear when I started this, I will have a playlist down in the description once this video is fully, I guess, not in the live section, but we're going to have it over in the main video area. I'll have a link to the uh, the French cleat playlist, which I have a ton of French cleats. I, I forget what the last one, maybe over 100, uh, well over 100 French cleats that I put up, as you can see behind me. Uh, I have uh, a playlist to the tape. Again, if you didn't see this earlier, which was a common kind of off topic question, I have a link to how I did that. I'll have that in the description as well. And a link by chance if y'all want to support us through uh, Amazon. I'll have that link down there as well. And uh, I just want to say thank you for everything. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, you are right. I've had some repairmen that knew I was blowing, knew I was blowing soap because of my, of what my dad told me. Yes, yes. Uh, that's a great thing about teaching your kids. If if you can just teach them just a minimal amount of stuff. So they know what they're doing. If you have a repairman coming over and well, let's just talk about cars. They say, you need some blinker fluid. I know that's a joke. And in most cases that we would do like blinker fluid, really. But you'd be surprised at how many people would fall for that. And so just stupid little things like that where they can get taken advantage of. Teach them the basics. I'm not asking for you to be tell them to be a repairman, you know, do whatever you'd like. But uh just the basics. It's very important. Okay. Michael, thank you very much. Time. Yes. Uh, you're very welcome, Michael. I, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to try hydrochloridrix. I probably mispronounced that. But thank you as well. Uh, so thank you for all who, who would join me today. I'm going to sign off and uh, end this today. But thank you so much. I really appreciated this. I can't believe I've been chatting and talking my head off for an hour. So y'all have a great day and uh, hope to see you in the comments.